that are holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, O God. We thank you, Jesus. You. Hallelujah. What we're doing in our midst this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are awesome in this place, O oh, mighty Thank God. You, we worship you, we worship you, O oh, God. Libra 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 we worship you, we worship you, oh God, we worship you, oh God. We give you all the highest praise, oh God, we worship you, oh God, yeah. You are God all by yourself, you are God all by yourself. Lord, we give you all the highest praise, oh God, we worship you, oh God, for making it possible for us to be counted amongst the living this morning. We worship you, oh God, hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you all the highest praise, Jesus. Yeah. The mountains keep like crumbs before you. The tempest, they hot at your very word. Our lives is changed because of your love. God, we give thanks to the great and mighty King. Oh, 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 oh. mountains keep like rams before you. Father, the tempest hot at your very word. My life. Is changed because of your love. We give thanks to the great and mighty King, because you are God. Are we my own? Faith. You are God alone. 
None can compare to you, Lord, no one like you. Father, we are assured, none can compare to you, Lord, no one like you. We believe in our hearts today, none can compare to you, Lord, no one like you. Oh God, oh God, none can compare to you, Lord. No one like you. Kabi Osi in all of the earth. In you alone a God, yes. You are God alone. So palebra live and day because a day yada do. We worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. You are God alone. You are God all by yourself. You are God alone. We give you all the highest praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name, Father. Oh, we just give you worship this morning. You remain God in our lives. You remain God in our experiences, Lord. There is none comparable with you. You have been so good, so awesome, so faithful to us, Lord. We appreciate you this morning as we share word together, as we share fellowship with our brethren. We thank you because your power and your presence is here already to lift us up and to make us who you want us to be. We thank you, Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And with that short prayer, I welcome you again this morning to another Sunday service in your living room. My name is Chris Ubamadu, the senior pastor here at Church for Real, and I am welcome you to this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. It's going to be a wonderful time today. Uh, the Lord has a perfect, particular word that is perfect word for somebody, and I want you to pay close attention because I'll be sharing with you something very, very exciting and something that is blessing me already this morning. Once again, welcome to church. This is Church for Real, and we welcome you with open arms this morning for this um, Sunday service. God bless you as you continue to join us. Um, this morning, um, I have something quite exciting I want to share with you, and it's found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. I will read just two, um, two verses or thereabout, and then we will, we will talk about this very important topic. In Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus says something in verse 19, that is the cross of our message today. And he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. This morning, I want to talk to you on dealing with the fear of the future. Dealing with the fear of the future. Every time Jesus speaks, to me, it's therapeutic. Each time I hear the words of Jesus, you can draw many meanings from every word that Jesus spoke while he was here. And those words are the things that build our life. They are the things that give us hope. They are the things that encourage us. And they are the things that enable us to overcome the challenges that we face in life from one time to the other. And so this is one of such verses. And today we're talking about dealing with the fear of the future. A lot of people have fear of the future. And at times it's excusable, you know, because of the things that people are dealing with in their private lives. You know, but for some people it's a major issue. You know, where people are afraid of what happens tomorrow. What does the future portend for me? What does the future have in store for me? And over the years, in all of recorded history, man, man has been fascinated with what does the future hold. As, as knowledgeable as we are today, nobody 
can tell for certain what tomorrow looks like, even the very next day. Nobody can say for certain what tomorrow looks like. And so for, for some people, when they look and they project into the future that they expect to walk into, it does not excite them. It does not evoke joy, enthusiasm. Rather, it brings some fear and anxiety into their lives. Some people are afraid, will they ever be successful in life? Some people are afraid, would they be employed? Would they have a source of livelihood? Some people are afraid, would they be able to meet up with the challenges that are going to face them in future? Some people are afraid, would they ever marry? Would they have children? When they look at their age and they look at what's happening, they are wondering, will I ever have a home of my own? Some people are afraid, would this business succeed? Some people are afraid, will I, be, will I live an, an, a lonely life in old age? Will I be able to attain my life's goals and desires and plans? So these are some of the fears that plague a lot of people. And in the process, denies them the opportunity of maximizing the present. And so today I want us to look at this. But let's, not, let's always put in mind what Jesus said to these disciples. These guys were professional fishermen. He said to them, follow me, and I will make you. And if you read the next verse, they left what they were doing, and they followed him. He said, I will make you. That means God is saying, I have the capacity to bring your future to pass. But let's look at it again. What does it mean to be afraid of the future? What does it mean to have the fear of the future. To, be fe to have the fear of the future is to be scared of what the future holds, to be scared of the uncertainty, to be scared of what would happen in my tomorrow. What will I end up looking like? What will I end up looking like in this endeavor? To be afraid of the future is to be worried, is to be worried that things will not work out as we have desired. The fear of the future is the fear of the unknown, the uncertainty about the future, the things that you cannot tell, and the possibility that things can happen the way you don't want them to happen. The fear of the future is to doubt our ability to secure the future that we desire. And there are so many reasons why people, especially in this part of the world where you cannot be sure of anything, it's natural for people to be afraid of the future, to look at their future, to look at the things ahead of them and be worried, be afraid, be afraid of their, of their source of livelihood. Will it continue? Will I continue to earn this amount? Will I be able to get this business to get to this level? As my children are growing and the responsibilities to, to me are increasing, will I be able to meet it? Will I be dependent in my old age? Will I succeed in this endeavor? When I walk into this new job or this career path, will I make it to the top? Will I do well at it? Will I be healthy? These are some of the things that plague people's mind and cause them to be afraid of the future. Let's look at some of the reasons why people are afraid of the future. Number one is unpleasant turn of events. Yeah, you have had great plans. Great things going for you. And all of a sudden, things turn out negative. For instance, at the beginning of this year, a lot of people had one, we all had wonderful plans for 2020. Some people went and invested money in their line of business. And then all of a sudden, from February, March, then the lockdown began. And that was a negative turn of event for a lot of people. As I speak with you now, some people have lost their goods. Some goods perished in the period. Some investments were lost in that period. Some businesses have not even recovered from it. Some businesses are still short today. That's a negative turn of events. And for some of these guys who are dealing with this reality, they may be afraid of the future. They may be wondering what's going to happen to me. Well, am I going to lose my, my collateral? Am I gonna, my, is my home going to be foreclosed? Am I going to lose my investment? These are some of the things that some people are dealing with. At times, some people are afraid of the future because of the loss of an anchor. An anchor can be a job, a source of livelihood. It can be a business. It can even be a relationship. It can be a loved one. You know, a father who has been training you in school, paying your fees, 
and taking care of you, all of a sudden you lose him. Such a person may likely be afraid of the future. What's going to happen to me? Who's going to pay my bills? Who's going to take care of my expenses? Who will take care of me? Who will be my companion? What's going to happen to me? It can be such an anchor that the person has lost. And naturally, it brings fear into their heart. Fear of the future. At times, some people are afraid of the future because of a health challenge. Ill health. They have fallen sick or if the doctors have diagnosed a, a particular ailment in their lives. And then when they studied it, and when they told them what that ailment would look like, they see they know the implications. They know what will likely happen physically to people who fall into these ailments, and they are worried about their future. They are worried about their families. They are worried about their responsibilities. They are worried about the dreams that they have, and they are afraid what will happen to these things because of this ill health that I have. At times, people are afraid of the future because of unpreparedness. They look at the future ahead of them and they see that for them to maximize it, for them to be comfortable, for them to be successful, there are certain things they needed to put in place. And they look around them and they see that they have not done those things. Naturally, they will be afraid. If somebody was to follow, pursue a career path, and he has not gotten the certifications that are necessary to advance in that career. He could be afraid. If, they, if an industry where someone is working in is threatened by you know, new innovations, by technology, or by, by, it can even be by the economy, he can become scared. And he can become afraid of the future because of his unpreparedness for what the future will likely demand. From him. So such a person may be afraid of the future. Also, some people can be afraid of the future because of the advancement in age. As they progress in age, they begin to see that the, 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 the end of their physical life is becoming nearer and nearer to them. And then they, be, they are worried. Then they are afraid of what the future holds. That can also be a reason why people can be afraid of the future. They just realize that, oh, this number of years have passed and I've not been able to accomplish the things that I thought I could have accomplished. And then it affects their confidence in the future and they are afraid and they are worried. Some other persons are afraid of the future because they have unfulfilled dreams. Some things they thought they could have accomplished when they were in their 20s. Some decisions they took when they were in their early 30s or when they were teenagers or thereabouts. Now they are looking at these things. They have not been able to accomplish some of these things. Maybe they have made some mistakes in the past and they are worried about the future. They are scared of what the future would hold. Such persons will have natural fear of the future. And then at times too, previous experiences can cause people to be afraid of the future. You have just got into this relationship and then you are remembering all the other relationship that you thought was going to end in marriage and you are worried about this one. You are scared about this one and you are telling yourself that this one may also end up like the others. Or you are following a career path. You are a professional in a particular field. And when you look at your senior colleagues who are in that same field, you don't like what you see. You don't like how their lives have turned out to be. You could become scared. You become afraid that, oh my God, does it mean after 30 years or 40 years of this line of business, of this line of career, career path, will I end up like him? Will I end up like her? Is this what my future is going to be? And so these things naturally evoke fear in people's hearts, such that when they look about, when they think about the future, they are scared, they are worried. But don't forget what Jesus Christ said. He said, follow me, and I will make you. I will make you. See, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Say, they are thoughts of good, to, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end, to bring you to the future that you desire, to bring you to the future that you deserve. That's the word of Jesus Christ to us this morning. As we contemplate what could have been causing the fear of the future in our heart, some people co come into what they call the mid midlife crisis. When they turn 40 and thereabouts, and then they, all of a sudden they are afraid of the future. They are afraid of what would happen in future. They are afraid of what could come ahead of them. 
tomb of this person also are afraid of the future. Now, let's look at why. Why is it impossible? Why is it, why is it so? Why can we, how can we tackle it? How can we tackle it? You know, what, what, what are the causes? You know, but as we, as we begin to contemplate that, I want you to know something, one basic fact I want to leave with you this morning is that the fear of the future is actually an illusion. Oh, yes. It's actually an illusion created by the mind. Why is that so? That's because the future has not happened yet. The future hasn't come to pass yet. It's still ahead of you. And there's nothing that says that those dreams cannot come to pass. Nothing that says that these things that you are afraid of would happen the way your fear projects them. So it's actually an illusion. And perhaps that's one way to get around it, to understand first that the fear of the future is not real. That fear has not happened. It's an illusion created by the mind. And so when you are able to pin it there, taking care of it becomes a lot more easier. And so what are some of the curses? What are some of the things that the fear of the future can cause? Number one is the loss of joy in the present. Yes, people who are afraid of the future cannot be joyful in the present. And you know what? Joy is the fuel of the moment. The Bible says with joy you shall draw from the wells of salvation. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is the fuel, is the natural fuel of the moment. The thing, the energy that helps you to attain your purpose, the energy that helps you to deal with the issues of life as they are in the present. But when you are afraid of the future, it drops you of that joy. Another cause of the fear of the future is the loss of enthusiasm to pursue your dreams. When you have looked at the future and you think it's bleak, the, the momentum, the impetus you need to tackle your dream, to pursue them, will be taken away from you. It's like leaking out the air in a tire. You will not be able to run fast when your tire is deflated. That's exactly what the fear of the future can do. The fear of the future can also demoralize you. It just demoralizes you. It paralyzes you, makes you immobile. And that's also one thing that the fear of the future can do. At times, the fear of the future creates doubts on your ability. It causes loss of confidence. Then you don't know, can I do this? You begin to doubt yourself. Can I really do this? Can I be a, an expert in this field? Can I really succeed the way that I thought that I would succeed? And so this morning, I want us to rest on one thing. There is a way to tackle the fear of the future. And I will just take you briefly into some of the things that you can do as a child of God to tackle the fear of the future. Because it could be real to a lot of people. A lot of people are facing it. When you look around you, you don't see any reason to be hopeful. You don't see any reason to think or to expect that the future will be beautiful, that the future will be great, especially when you are looking at the people that have gone ahead of you in the same line, and their lives are not encouraging. The things you see are not the, the way that you want your life to be. It's natural to be afraid of the future. But friend, I tell you this morning, do not forget that Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you. He has the capacity to make you. Don't forget that. So how do we tackle? You're already facing it, and you are wondering, how do I come out of this situation? I'll just share a few thoughts with you as I begin to round off this morning. Number one that you can do to tackle the fear of the future is to face up your fear. What exactly is the cause of this fear? Is it that you don't have enough savings? Is it that you have not advanced yourself in your professional field? Is it that you have not gotten into the area of career that you really want to go into? Is it because you have not taken some decisions that you need to take for your life? Is it because you have not made some investments that you need to make? Is it because you are not saving enough? Identify that very reason why you are afraid of the future and face it. When you are able to identify what that reason is that is causing you to be afraid of the future, then you take the steps that will help to mitigate it. You take the steps that will help you to overcome it. Face that fear. Face that fear. Don't run away from it. Face that fear. Acknowledge it. Face it. 
When you face it and you are able to take the decisions that would help you to overcome it, then you will see that that fear will die a natural death. So number one is to face up your fear. Identify the cause of the fear of the future in your heart and deal with it. Number two is to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. If, for instance, the reason you are afraid of the future is because you are, you, are, you, are, you are scared that you may not be able to meet up with the financial responsibilities that are ahead of you, why don't you begin to invest in yourself today? What will it take for you to increase your earnings power? Those are the things that you need to invest in. What skills, what extra skills or learnings or exposures do you need or information do you need to increase your ability to meet up with those challenges that you know for certain would come your way? As a young man, you will lead a family someday. someday. As a young woman, you will have a home someday. If you are afraid that you may not be able to be a mother, you are afraid that you may not be able to, to, to raise a family, then deal with it. What are those the skills that you think that you lack? As a young man, what are the things that you think that you lack that is making you be scared of the responsibilities that will likely come ahead of you? Then you can invest in yourself to overcome those shortcomings. Another thing you can do is to make plans for the future, yes. If you don't have a plan, my brother, you have every reason to be afraid of the future. If you have not planned for your life, you have no plan. When you do not have plans, plans are the things you put in place to enable you to maneuver through the challenges of life, to prepare for the future. When you have plans, you are in a better position to take advantage of opportunities. When you have plans, you are more prepared for what would come in front of you. That's why plans are gifts. Plans are resources. Plans are wonderful. So you need so for one way you can actually have control of the future is to have a plan. Have a plan. Have a plan. Don't live your life anyhow. Don't live your life just as it comes. Whatever will be will be. My friend, it is not so. Whatever will be will not be. Somebody has to make something be. And so have a plan. Settle down and plan. Settle down and write down the plan. Write down the plan. The Bible says write down the vision. Make it clear so that he who reads it will run, will be motivated to act. So one way to take a hold of the future and remove the fear is to have a plan. Have a plan for the future. Begin to plan your life from today. And you will see that the fear of the future will naturally vanish out of your heart. And so what's the next thing that you need to do after you have made your plans to be able to control your heart, to be able to deal with the fear of the future? Another thing that you must do is to control your thoughts. Some of us think that our thoughts are uncontrollable, but that's a lie of the devil. You can control what you think about. Every time you think negative thoughts, you have negative vibes around you. You are, not, you are prone to be afraid. But instead of entertaining those thoughts that things may not work out, why don't you think that things would work out? Instead of entertaining those thoughts that you would fail, why don't you imagine that you would succeed? You can control your thoughts. And let me tell you one secret to controlling your thoughts. The way to control your thoughts is to change what you are thinking about. It's as simple as that. When you are thinking thoughts that generate fear and anger in your heart, change that thought. Think something else. And you will find out that automatically, you don't even need to pray about it, automatically, once your thoughts change, your mood will change. Your perception will change. So control your thoughts. Control your thoughts. Bring down every thought that makes you fearful of the future. And when you do that, you will see that the fear of the future will disappear from your heart and you will be much more confident to tackle the future that is ahead of you. And the last but not the least I will leave with you today is what the Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. And I want you to look at it if you have your Bible. I want you to look at that wonderful scripture in Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. I can tell you what it says. Oh, my God. Joshua chapter 1. Look at it. Look at it. 
in verse 8. He says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have what? Good success. So one way that you can deal with the fear of the future is to emphasize the word of God. Emphasize the word of God. Take the word of God for what it is. Build your life on the promises that Jesus Christ gave you. Every word that God has said concerning your future is what I want you to feed your heart with. When those fears arise, feed your heart with the word of God. Know that your heart is in the hand of God. Your life, your future is in God's hand. You cannot control the future, but God does. God knows the future. Put your future in God's hands. He can make you. He said, follow me and I will make you. I will make you. Jesus can make you, my friend. And I want to tell you today, when you learn to put your future in his hand and relax in his hand, he has the capacity to ride you all the way through the challenges and the obstacles you will face to ensure that you arrive at the future that is beautiful, a future that is rewarding, a future that is fulfilling, a future that is satisfying. He said, with long life and prosperity, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. That's the words of our Lord Jesus. He said, follow me and I will make you. I will make you. He can make you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. That was wonderful. And in case this morning you were saying to me, Pastor Chris, how can I trust God with my future when I don't have a relationship with Him? That can also be solved this morning. That can be solved this morning if you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. So you can have the legal right to hand over your future to Him. I want to give you that opportunity this morning. If you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, or if you were once, if you were once a Christian and you have backslidden, you have left the way of the Lord and you are pursuing other things now. You can repair that relationship. You can be restored back to fellowship with God so that with confidence you can look into your future and know that you are going somewhere. Perhaps your problem may be that you have made some mistakes and you are afraid that they will be waiting for you in the future to hurt you. Let me tell you something, child of God. When God forgives you, he forgives you completely. He said, I am he that blots out the transgression and remembers your sin no more. That's the God that we deal with. And tonight, this morning, I want, you, I want to encourage you to open your heart to the Lord Jesus as you say this prayer after me. Please place your hand on your chest wherever you are and let's pray together. One minute and things will change for you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I recognize that I cannot control my future or by myself. I do not have what it takes to determine what tomorrow would be. But today I learned that I can trust you with my future. But Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you today to make you my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. I give my heart to you. I cannot save myself. I've been a sinner. I've lived like a sinner because I was born in sin. But Lord, today I open my heart to you and receive your salvation. Receive the forgiveness of sin into my heart that you would come in and live in me and walk in me and make me your own. From today, I am a child of God in the mighty name of Jesus. If you said that prayer, I want to tell you that you are now a child of God. And one of the direct benefits of being a child of God is that your future is in God's hands. And God will take care of that which troubles you in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to pray for everyone who has heard this broadcast this morning and who are contemplating how to deal with the fear of the future. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for my brothers and my sisters. Everywhere they are, hearing the sound of my voice under this broadcast this morning. Lord, I pray for them in the name of Jesus. That the faith in your word will well up in their spirit. The faith in your word will rise up in their hearts. And make them see that the future is in your hands. And that you have good plans for them. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will have enough faith to overcome the fear of the future. That whenever they think about their future, they will see the picture that is in your hands. They will see the picture that the word of God has painted for them. For you said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. Lord, I pray that these words will ring deeply in their heart and in their spirit, that by these they would know that you are able to make them what they believe that they want to be. You are able to bring them to the future that they desire. That from this day onwards, the fear of the future is banished out of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And for that brother that made a mistake, he has confessed to you, Lord, I ask you that you will restore him to where he needs to be. That the repercussions of the decisions of yesterday, even as he has changed his mind and has yielded his heart to you, Lord, you will remove him from the repercussions of those decisions and those bad steps that he took in the years past and free him free him from every negative consequence in the mighty name of Jesus Lord we thank you we bless you in Jesus name we pray amen amen and then lastly I want to thank every one of you who join us in this our broadcast every Sunday and every Wednesday I want to thank you for doing so and I want to encourage you to continue to do so. It's always an awesome privilege to be able to reach you. Please continue to do so. This will come your way every, every morning, every Sunday, and also every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Our Sunday broadcast remains on for 9 a.m. every Sunday morning. Please join us. And for those of you who are partners with the work that the Lord is doing here, God will bless you. God will enrich you. God will give back to you more than everything that you have given for the sake of the work. And for those of you that have remained faithful in your tithing, you are not tithing to man. You are tithing to God. And God sees. Because he says in Malachi, say, prove me therefore with this your tithe and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. I am sure that the blessings of God are pouring into your heart in form of ideas, in form of relationships, in form of resources. Look around you and you will see them. So please continue to remit your tithes and your offerings. The account details are right there on your screen. Look at them, take note of them, and use them. You can do direct transfers, you can use USSD, you can pay in cash, whatever means is available to you. Even your banking apps, you can do that. Please continue to do so and watch God bless your finances in the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, I want to thank you. Please, if you require counseling, if you want someone to speak with you, please call the numbers on the screen. Those numbers work. Somebody will be at the other end to speak with you and to talk with you. I want to hear from you, most importantly, how these messages have blessed you how they have enriched your life. We would like to hear your testimonies because they are the things that encourage us to continue to do this. And I thank you once again for joining us this morning. Don't forget, don't forget, Jesus has the ability to make you. Follow him and he would make you. In Jesus' name, amen. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, forgive our sins, he lived and died. Savior leave. God sent his son they call him Jesus he came to love to heal and forgive oh he lived and died Is there to prove 
that my Savior leave. Oh, oh, because I can face tomorrow because He My life is what I live in just because my Savior lives. Oh, because He lives, I can face tomorrow because He future. 